Hey guys, it's Paul Zakopoulos back. This is episode two of Spend Five Minutes to Save 50 Minutes, where I'm going to take five minutes of your time and I'm going to find you 50 minutes of your time in your life because of the time you spent with me. Today we're going to go a couple of minutes over, so I'm going to actually give you probably 60 or 70 minutes of your time back. Um, I'm going to pull some slides out that I've taken from some of my colleagues uh, with love. Uh, I'm going to tell you if I do 50 of these episodes, it's because I failed at all 50 things. I failed and failed again and kept trying to figure out a way to get more efficient and now I'm sharing it with you. So fail fast, fail often, that's how you learn. You can follow me on Twitter at Big Data underscore Paul Z. Subscribe to my YouTube channel. You'll get this type of information, a bunch of other stuff as well like around Big Data. What do I have in my crosshairs today to make you faster and look more professional? It's the white box background on imagery and screen caps and logos that make your presentations look horrible. So if you look here, uh, there's an IBM logo in the box. Uh, clearly it's a screen cap with a white background. Or someone sends you a template and this template's fancy because it has a watermark on it, it has a hue or a tint to the color. And because all your uh, icons and stuff like that aren't in PNG format, suddenly you don't look that professional. Now you're fixed with what? You know, what are you faced with? Let me go send this out to media design, find someone to do it. I'll get it back in two days. I'm in a hurry, damn it. I have no idea how to fix this. I'd like to care, but I don't have time to care because you just added a half hour to my time. It's so important when people make templates to understand the impact. They don't. That will be another episode. And B, how do you minimize the impact on you from other folks that have no idea of the impact they're causing? This is that tool. So you can see... Here's a great example of Hadoop, right? Um, I'm gonna move this icon over here, but you can already see what's going on. See how I'm covering the icons here? This Hadoop icon I want there, it's white, it's taking too much space. How are you gonna handle this today before you spent the day with uh, Paul here on this podcast? I'm gonna copy that probably, so someone's gonna do that because see that extra white space here? And then they'll get, get rid of that or they'll paste that in. Now there's at least less white space. The other thing that they might do, hopefully you know about the crop tool, so you double click on that, get into picture format. I'm on a Mac, but you'll figure it out on Windows. And here I'll just select a crop. And so here, now I can actually crop it like you would a photo, and I can at least get rid of a lot of white space. And that's gonna work okay in a lot of times, right? But you can still see I have a coverage. So what's someone else gonna do? Well, they'll go and say, well, let me move Hadoop there. Oh, I didn't want Hadoop there. And now you're gonna spend time redesigning for no purpose of design. I gotta get all my block icons over here. Maybe, you know, the Redis isn't gonna fit, so that's gonna look bad. I can go put R in there and hide that, right? Maybe I'll move Titan up here and Spark down here, right? So now you're playing around. But look at, look at Kafka and look at Spark icons. They have white backgrounds, right? But it's not a pure white background. So in some cases that would work. In this case, it's actually not gonna work. So what's the answer? Someone help us get smart, work faster, and save me 50 minutes of my time this year. Let's, let's go work on the R one. See R there? See how it's covering everything up? Let's go double click on that. Same way you got to the crop. Go to color, drop down, set transparent color. Love this thing. This thing works great for pictures with a white background and most icons to go that don't have white within them, right? Because you're gonna pick a color that becomes transparent. So in here, I'm gonna pick this color white, right where the arrow is. Look at that, isn't that awesome, right? Yeah, I know, I'm making it easy. All right, so let's select Redis, Mongo, all the offenders here, okay? All right, so we've got all the offenders here. I just did a shift select, I'm gonna do the same thing. What am I showing you now? How to save time on the time I just sent you. Oh, wonderful. Now, look what happens when I bring these to a black background. See that? The Mongo and the Spark, they get this um, white effect around them because it can't quite pick up uh, the nuances of the curves. And then so most folks would take that, then you go to a <clears throat> Photoshop or something and burn it out or that's where they remove it. I'm gonna show you how to work with black backgrounds in a future episode. But look how nice Elasticsearch is. Uh, that's what I did personally within PowerPoint to get to there. So we'll show you that coming up. That's a little teaser for you. Let's go back and fix this problem here, which I didn't like at all. So um, if I go and show you this image, look what it is, right? It's an IBM image. So I should be able to do the same stuff. 
you said before, right? Or I said before. So I'll go set that transparent color. You can already see it's gotten transparent, right? And so here we go, right? And um, I think I can, uh, now I have to show you your bonus tip, right? You may have noticed it already. If you didn't, well, you'll thank me for this too. Double click, picture format, color. You can recolor and change saturations and tones of all the images you pull up. This works phenomenally well for icons. I use it for two areas. One, I got an icon that I want to brighten up. So in this case here, I want to make that pop. I'm going to select that gray. See how nice that pops? Or maybe I have like eight icons and I want them to follow a color scheme, like have them all some kind of tone of blue. I could go back here and, and go and select these and make them all blue based and, and that kind of stuff. So that's a really cool extra feature I just gave you. Now I'm going to give you even another tip. You ready? This is the ultimate bonus round here. So you go into Google, you find an image. Here's a picture with a white background like I talked about. You can drag and drop these from Firefox into PowerPoint, which I always like to do. Uh, I typically go to the view image. I find sometimes if I just drag and drop from over here, I may not get all the resolution I was expecting. So here, I'll just drag and drop that. And this is typical, right? Yeah, bring in an image and now we're at the same points. Now I can't really do a good job of cropping this because I'm already cropped. And let's say I wanted to put this picture here somewhere. Well, I'm gonna make it this small, even here. And I could send it to the back and play around with that kind of stuff. Uh, but I think I can do better, right? I click on that, color, set transparent color. Oh, wonderful. Now, now we're really working here, right? Now we're really saving time. You've got me this image. And in the images, I don't know how this will turn out, but depending on the image resolution. Well, you can see that turned out great on black background too, right? So don't be afraid to experiment. Control Z for undo. Control Z is your friend. PZ is your friend. Hopefully you just found a whole bunch of minutes for your year. And we'll see you in the next episode.